I am donating books from the school that I teach at. Being able to help out and do something good, and, yeah, it definitely feels good. Books and education help change our thinking. I made my dreams come true because of the books that I read. You know, a book creates hope, creates opportunity. You get to see the world in a way you've never seen it before. The name, Books for Africa, it's self-explanatory. It's a simple organization doing a simple thing, sending books. I would had a successful business publishing and selling books, and, and I sold out for a lot of money in 1988, and I took a trip around the world, and I went to Ginger, which is the source of the Nile in Uganda, and met this lady, and she showed me the Ginger Library. It, it was a proper library. It had tables and chairs and bookshelves. It had students sitting around tables, but heavens, there were empty shelves. It had no books. I went to the Minnesota Book Publishers Roundtable. You know, they need books in Africa, and particularly in this library that I visited. Can we find a way to send them some books? And so, uh, we did. If you can put a book in the hands of a child now, in a short time, that child is going to become a leader of something. Initially, we sent a few bags of books, but soon realized this was not a cost-effective way of doing it. And so we started to send 20-foot containers of books. I am in education, and hearing that um, Tom is working towards trying to uh, deal with issues related to literacy, how can I get involved? At that point, there were not too many Africans who were involved in it, and I think Tom was looking for somebody, at least from the continent, to be part of the organization. Didn't have a blink of an eye. I just said, yes, I would like to be on the board. Those early years, were difficult. You know, we started the organization thinking that individuals would give us, you know, $100, $50, and we'd raise enough money to keep sending books. You know, after a few years, it was not working that way. We were not sending many books. So then we realized that we find organizations that had an interest in Africa. I was involved with Rotary, and our Rotary Club decided to send a shipment of books to there. And it's a great arrangement because the Rotary Club can fund, help sort books, and that Books for Africa takes care of getting the books there and having books. And the Rotary Clubs in Africa receive the books, make sure they get out to the right schools and libraries. Oh, books are very important in Zimbabwe, just like in any other society, just because they are a medium of empowering the African child to be a good citizen just because they will be equipped with education that comes from the books. The Rotarians started to fund containers. We would bundle the books up and send them out to Nairobi or wherever. We had one of our early successes, I remember, was the, the Ethiopian universities raised 100,000. We sent them 10 containers of, of college-level books. Those first years were pretty lean, but they've really grown into quite an organization. The changes over the years um, have been dramatic. Look at the number of warehouses we've had, each of them bigger than the next one, and then we moved the warehouse to Atlanta and then expanded there. My gosh, I, I remember when I was on the board and we passed the one million mark, we were sending a million books in a year, and that was like incredible and now we're at two million a year. But yet, the organization has not changed. The mission is still the same that in the book famine in Africa. They don't have books. They just don't have books. I know exactly what a book famine is. I grew up living it and I still have that memory um, while at school, at Forodhani Secondary School, like really dying to get the books. I was hooked from that day on because I knew exactly what they were doing and what an impact it would be. The mission is that of empowerment. You know, so the old adage about teaching a man to fish or giving him fish. Books of Africa teach, teach, teaches people to fish. And I think that when people get caught on with their vision, it inspires them to want to give, to want to participate in. Everybody should at least 
have a book that they read one book at least once you get to the first book you will never let it go you know when i started books for africa it was just an idea to help this one library but i never believed that it would grow like this it, it's just amazing there has been a lot of changes the number of books that are now being shipped in a year and uh, also the expansion to a new facility that sends out books I'm very happy to see that many African leaders within Minnesota who are involved in the operation and the running of the organization. The mission of Books for Africa is to end the book famine in Africa. And that same famine that exists in primary schools and secondary schools also exists in graduate schools. We formed a law book program and we were fortunate that we were able to partner with Thomson Reuters, the largest publisher of law books in the world. Before we were, we were just in a classroom where we had about two shelves. Now that we have grown and that we have so many books around, it is easy to accommodate all the students at once. We have provided 85 law libraries uh, to different uh, organizations across the that there's opportunities for us to do more. We sent lots of books to the Gambia and did a walk across the Gambia with students. We've done walks across the United States. We recently walked across Zanzibar, walked across the Gambia. These walks are one of those crazy ideas that work. They generate excitement. We've already sent books to every single country in the continent, which is quite an achievement. We want more books to send and then we want the specific kinds of books that are wanted by our recipients in Africa. We have seen a demand for digital books and computers, so we've provided those. Expanding the geographic reach of Books for Africa to more countries, to more rural areas where kids and adult learners need books more. Books for Africa is so helpful in countries like Ghana, especially in the rural areas where most people live. Dreams are equal opportunity gifts. Everybody can dream, right? So we need to make sure that people have resources so that they can live out their, their, their dreams and live out their potential because we all miss out for all these kids and what they can become. Books for Africa have uh, contributed immensely to the development of this country. The reading culture will be improved and once the reading culture is improved, then development can be impacted. Why is Books for Africa successful? There are several reasons. Number one, the founder does not run it. We've had two great executive directors, Bob Krauchak and Pat Ponsky. Because Books for Africa gets the books for free, because we have more than 2,000 volunteers a year sorting and packing the books, all of us board members, many other volunteers. My U.S. dollar goes farther with this organization than any other nonprofit based in the U.S. Books for Africa is really a well-run operation, particularly from a financial perspective. You know, a dollar, you can send two books. We really keep that bottom line uh, focused to make sure we're delivering as many books as we can. And when someone gives money to Books for Africa, you know it's going to get there. We are number two in one of Charity and Advocator's lists of the top 10 nonprofits nationwide that rely on private funding. Number two in the nation. That's incredible. This organization has succeeded because it's a nonprofit, but it follows the business model. You pay attention to your cost structure, uh, don't uh, get too big unnecessarily or get too big too fast. We manage costs very carefully and we're very, very frugal, very frugal. We pay attention to the children in Africa. So a shared sense of purpose and mission is what is making Books for Africa successful. To be the world's largest shipper of books to the African continent, based in St. Paul, Minnesota, with a relatively small staff of 20 or so employees and to have served the entire continent of Africa in 30 years is just phenomenal. It's testimony to the great work of the individuals, including Tom Worth, who created Books for Africa 30 years ago 
and everyone else who has kept it going. I see the importance of Books for Africa being an opportunity to connect communities, to connect knowledge, and to unleash the potential that we have amongst the young people. It's important also to be cognizant of the changing times, right? And then, so being able to be flexible also allows Books for Africa to, be, to change with, with, with the times and continue to maintain relevance. Some of the examples of things we've talked about are custom printing of books in local languages. We've explored uh, establishment of book trusts in Africa so that we provide more books on site as opposed to sending books simply from Atlanta. Now it's really evolving into can I print books, what partnerships can I do with USAID and, and Ghana Book Trust and all the organizations to deliver a lot more books. And we're also experimenting with um, some books up on the cloud and uh, African books written by Africans or histories and, and geographies and things that are to the continent. This is a terribly important mission and I urge everyone to give Book for Africa their support. To watch it grow in the early years to make sure that books were getting there and now to be part of an organization that has delivered over 40 million books has just been a life-changing experience. So I'm very glad I was able to go to that ginger library and just see it. And they said, hey, as you celebrate your 30th anniversary, uh, don't forget us. And I said, no, Tom Watt will make sure we don't forget you. As an African, as a Pan-African, I join with my brothers and sisters in the continent, who many who don't know who Tom is, to say that we are very thankful for his vision. To all of you, to Tom, to supporters of Books for Africa, my heartiest congratulations and may you continue for another 30 years and more. And I hope that I will end the book famine in my lifetime so I can see and say, hey, we did it.